Today we're going to be talking about transposing. Now for the basic theory exam, you will only be asked to transpose with four key signatures. There's only three here, but four. Also, you'll only be asked to transpose up an octave or down an octave in the same key or changing clefs. All right, but it will be, you're not gonna be transposing into a different pitch. So this is the type of question you could get asked. It's name the key of the following melody and then rewrite the melody at the same pitch in the bass clef. So we have to really make sure that we read the question properly. So what's the first thing? Name the key of the following melody. So here it is. So it has three sharps. So remember the rules for sharps? Father Charles goes. What comes after G in the alphabet? A. So we know that we are in the key of A major. Okay, so they want you to transport, uh, rewrite the melody at the same pitch in the bass clef. Okay, so let's draw the bass clef. Okay, the same pitch. Now we have to write exactly what we see when we write. It's like you're rewriting a score for somebody. So there's three sharps, so let's put the sharps in. Father, Charles, goes. All right, we need to put the time signature exactly as is. Now let's just move down to the piano for a second. We're gonna look at that first A. That A, because think of middle C as the very first leisure line you learn. All right, two leisure lines below the treble clef. What note is that? Is in A. Okay, that's A. If it was three leisure lines, it would be for F. So anyways, this one that we're looking at had two leisure lines. So it had the middle C and down. So C, B, A. C, B, A. So we're going to start on A. This is where they want that first note written because remember they said it at the same pitch in the bass clef. So let's go back up to writing. So we know we want to start in the bass clef on A. So this is what it looks like with leisure lines. Remember the one line is C, two down is A. So we're going to, this is A in the bass clef. And then you have to follow stem rules. Okay, so the stems usually go an octave long. Now after you get your first note, just look to see what's happening and you're just going to follow what's happening there. So from A, we're going up to B. So we're just stepping up. Now, we're going to draw down and you see it's an eighth note. Well, the flag for eighth note always waves to the right. Now we're going to step down, back to an A. Now look at here, from a line to a line, we skipped up. So from here, from a line, space, line, there's your middle C, skipping up. Okay, we skipped up. We draw the bar line and try to write underneath so that you can follow exactly what's happening. From C, what are we doing? We're skipping up. So you are going to do the line note here because that was for C, D, E. And what is that? Doesn't look very good with my marker there, but that's an E. Step down to a D. Should have gone a little closer. Step down to a C. Now these are eighth notes. So we know the stem rules. Notes above line three, the stems come down. We're going stepping down. So we're going to step down here. Step down again there. So we're going to step down here. All right, make sure the stem rules, stems are an octave long. We're following exactly what's there. Now look at here. C, B, A, C, B, A, G. So it's a half note on G. And then what do we do here? It's got the two lines, C, C, A. So we're gonna do the half note up top. Make sure you end with exactly, so this is the double bar, meaning the end of the song. And that's what you would do. If there was um, a composer's name here, you would write it here as well. If it had a dynamic marking here, you would write it here as well. If it had tempo speed here on Dante, for instance, you would write it here. You would write exactly what you see, but in how they ask you to change it. So that's one thing, writing in the same pitch. They could ask you for the basic exam. Name the key of the following melody, transpose it 
down one octave into the bass clef. Okay, so here we have, let's do the first thing, we have two sharps, so that's Father Charles. What comes after C? D. We know we're in the key of D major. All right. Oh, but wait, let's look. You see the body of this song? We're going to have to discuss this a little bit more. Uh, when you look at your video, it's the part three, I think it was. It was for naming minors. Let's see if this is to a minor key. So, because we see accidentals in there. So whenever you see accidentals in the body of the song, find out the major first and then figure out if maybe this is the minor. So let's figure that out. Okay, so the major would be D major. So who is D major related to? Okay, so let's go down to the keyboard. Okay, we're gonna erase that here. D major, remember we need to go down to the mines. So three half steps down, one, two, three. We landed on B minor. See, if we wanted to go from the mines, we'd have to climb out. So we have to go one, two, three. B minor is related to D major. Now, how do we check that piece? So the, in the minor key, the harmonic note, which is known as the seventh note, is usually raised. So who is the seventh note to be? So what are we going to be looking for to see if this is a, a minor key? We're going to be looking for an A sharp. Right? And sometimes the sixth can be raised too, this melodic. We could be looking for the G sharp. But really it's the seventh you really want to look for when you're uh, looking to see what key it's in to make it easier right now. So A sharp, let's see the song has an A sharp. So we're going to look at the back of the melody. Whoa, yes, A sharp A. There's even a G sharp and another A sharp. So we cannot say that this is in D major. What do we have to say then? This is in B minor. Because remember, the minor and the major that are related share the same last name, meaning the key signature. All right. So now, let's transpose it down into the bass clef. So let's draw our bass clef first. Write the key signature. Remember, all key signatures for the treble or bass always start on a line, so you know where to start. So Father Charles. The time signature, let's not forget that. And we have to go one octave down. So let's see where we are on the keyboard with this first B. And you will have a picture of a keyboard if you're doing an exam, so you can follow the picture. There's the B that they have. They want you to write it an octave. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. An octave is eight notes down in the bass clef. So they want you to start this on what? Right there, below middle C. So this is how we would start. Okay. We have the B, because that's an octave lower than that B. Now let's count one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And because we're above line three, our stem's gonna come down, try to keep them an octave long. Then we're skipping down. So from this line, we're gonna skip to this line. Let's count up one. Always count the note. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That was a B in the bass clef, and that could be in the treble clef. Now look what's happening here. We're going, stepping down, so let's step down to the A. But what's in front of that A? And remember, the accidental will always be in front of the note. This is for the space, so you know it's for that space note A, obviously. So, but in the bass clef, A is a line note, so we gotta draw the sharp as a line sharp. Let's do our stem and our dot. Steps up. It's an eighth note, so we go down. Remember, the flags always wave to the right, whether the stem goes up or down. We step up. We're going to step up to C. We skipping down. So from the C, we skip down to an A. They're eighth notes. The bar line. So we're going to continue like that. So if the note is raised, we're going to raise it. You're going to follow suit exactly what is happening. And by not, not by naming each note, but just following what's happening. If they're stepping, if they're skipping, if they're leaping, just follow whatever they're doing, you're going to do so that it will sound identical. Of course, when you're finished writing, you have to finish with your double bar. All right. So, like I said, they could ask you for the basic, a possibility of four sharps, or they could ask you a possibility of four flats, battle ends, 
and down. Father Charles goes down. Obviously, they mean nothing because they're not on a staff, but just so that you remember. So, hope that helped. But just, I'm going to talk to you again about the Mozart effect. Just some interesting facts here. You might find it interesting. So, in monasteries in Brittany, monks play music to the animals in their care and have found that cows serenaded with Mozart give more milk. At St. Agnes Hospital in Baltimore, patients in critical care units listen to classical music. Half an hour of music produced the same effect as 10 milligrams of Valium. Wow, that's interesting. Oh, another fact here. I'm not going to find out if this is true, but the city of Edmonton, Canada, pipes in Mozart string quartets in the city squares to calm pedestrian traffic. And as a result, drug dealings have lessened. So wow, what an effect. We're going to end today, but we're going to end with some flashcards. And we'll just up our music a little bit so you can listen to some music. And look at these facts. Looking at flashcards and reviewing helps. So I'll be quiet now. See you soon.